Hi, it's Jeff Gardner. For this episode, I want to talk about something called the back rooms. Yes, yeah, so the back rooms, that's uh, a lot of people, they'll have the, this like really weird and trippy dream or nightmare where it's like they're just in this like empty room with only uh, a couple pieces of furniture and they're looking around, they're really freaked out and they can't find their way out a lot of the time. And it's it's like, they're, it feels like they're gonna be, just be trapped in this weird, surreal, unsettling room. And a lot of people will have the same dream and they're wondering why that is. Like, why, why are we all, we have this weird dream and we're all going to the same place. And I'd be able, to, what the fuck is with that? Why are we all dreaming in the same very specific like room or series of rooms like where some like sometimes it's not just one room like maybe it'll have like a hallway but it's like an empty hallway and it leads to also another empty room and a lot of people will have this dream because uh, a lot of the time when you have a dream or nightmare it's like uh yeah places you're familiar with like your your own bedroom or whatever your kitchen whatever bathroom Oh, any any number of different rooms in your your home or your school or where you work, whatever. And uh, but it's like this specific place is like where it's like either there's no furniture or almost no furniture, and the walls are all, all like blank and everything. And people, it's just like really eerie and disturbing. And people all, well, a lot of people seem to have this very specific dream and they can't explain it. And yeah, I've heard of people having this dream, like uh, like from different parts of the earth, and like they wonder why are we having the same dream. And uh, yeah, it's it makes me think that yeah, there's something supernatural about this, definitely. And yeah, my knowledge about this uh, it kind of led to me writing. So how I've discussed before how my books. I'm an I'm an author. I, I write the horrors call a series of books. Um, one of my books is titled, uh, Call of the Cherokee, and I don't want to spoil my own book, but it's about, you know, without spoiling the whole plot or anything, just the basics, it's, it entail, it takes place in Chicago, and it involves a haunted theater known as the Cherokee Theater. Anyway, so, part of the, that book's plot deals with uh, the idea of the back rooms. Uh, anyway, so yeah, that's just what I mean, like how I try to incorporate ideas of like urban legends and conspiracies, stuff like that into my books. But yeah, so the back rooms, I think it's, yeah, it's an influence one, that novel I had written, and it's because I, I think it's true, like the back rooms, um, there's just so much evidence. It's like how I've spoken about like DMT, like people will see the same trippy shit when they smoke DMT. And it's like the same stuff, like different religions will all, all around the earth have talked about for generations or whatever, like pretty much always. So yeah, I think the back room is definitely, it's real. And yeah, I, I have some theories about that. So like, so like how I'm a Buddhist, you have like a couple like schools of thought on that matter. I mean, not the back rooms, but what I think, well, I think it's the back, it might be the back rooms. I think the back rooms are real. I believe they're real. And I know in, in Buddhism, so you have, so what's most commonly referred to is, or I think what most people would be familiar with would be like the bardo. Uh, which is kind of like, it's a transitional kind of like purgatory kind of place uh, within Buddhism. That, that, that's more like Tibetan Buddhism, but then in, in Zen Buddhism, there's like the intermediate state. So that's, they're talking about the same thing as you say intermediate state or bardo, different schools of Buddhism have their different interpretations or whatever exactly about it. But uh, it's kind of like a waiting place, not just waiting, but it's a transitional 
place. So that makes me think maybe that could be it. And then you have other religions that talk about like uh, like purga like in Catholicism, purgatory. So in that, yeah, that it, it could be that the, the different religions talking about the same place, and maybe it's the back rooms, or at least the back rooms is like part of it, maybe. And I've heard of people like doing like, like you know how I mentioned like DMT, like people will have the same experiences. That makes me think about that too. Like, hmm. Why is that, that people will, like, yeah, how people smoke DMT and they'll see the same stuff. And, yeah, the back rooms, people have the same nightmares and see the same place. It's like they're going to the same place. And I've heard of people having, like, near-death or whatever they think is a near-death experience and, like, a this weird trippy dream they're having. So maybe it's like that, where it's like, uh... You have the back rooms, like it's like you're go you're going to this transitional intermediate state or place, and I'm not saying it's all the back rooms, but maybe that's like part of it. Maybe that's like the entrance or something. That would be my take on it. That's my best guess, and uh, that yeah, I think it's real. And as a Buddhist, that's what I relate it to the most. That I, I think is. Hmm, what does Buddhism say about this matter? Obviously, they wouldn't use the term the back room since that's like a more contemporary, like new term that people use now. But thinking about my faith, uh, Buddhism, like, well, what does it say? And yeah, that, that's what I thought about it quite a bit. So not just what initially comes to mind, but that's that's what I'm inclined to think that this that likely is what the reality of the back rooms probably is. And yeah, that's what makes the most sense to me about it. Uh, I'd be interested in hearing your thoughts. If you guys have different theories about uh, what the back rooms are, if you guys want to, yeah, so comment down below if you have a theory. If you want to go type on your keyboard, say, oh, if Gardner, I think it's at uh, this year, it's totally different and you're wrong. It's actually whatever this, or, or you're just dreaming and it's not real, or if you think it's uh, another dimension separate from that, uh, I respect your opinions, but uh, yeah, let, let me know, I'm, I'm curious. Uh, yeah, because I've heard a mix of different opinions about this, and uh, what I said, what I just explained, I think is the most logical or plausible, whatever, explanation, yeah, that honestly does seem like the most logical explanation to me, but I can only speak for myself. So yeah, maybe if someone, if they're a different religion or whatever, it would have a different interpretation. Or if someone's not even religious at all, yeah, I'd, I'd just, I'd equally be interested in hearing what their take on it is. I don't see how it could be that we're all seeing the same thing though. Like that, that's like, you know, something to it. It's like, you know, the movie Nightmare on Elm Street, the Freddy Krueger. You can't just all have the same dream. That's not possible. Or, or nightmare. So it's like that type of thing. All these people in real life, well, even though Buddhism says this isn't real, real, like this, this isn't real life, truly, this is a, like a illusory, kind of like the Matrix. It's still like, why are we all having this specific dream of the back rooms same with dmt for that matter like so yeah the more i think about it that's the most sense the, the most logical conclusion that makes the most sense to me is that it's what buddhism says about this intermediate state um yeah just that's those are f gardner's thoughts on the matter about the back rooms and uh yeah check out my book <clears throat> Call of the Cherokee, if you're interested in that. Yeah, I'm quite proud of uh, that book. I'm proud of all my books, of course. Uh, I'm an artist, and you, an artist should be uh, proud of their work. That's not an that's not an ego thing to say that. No, so that's something people misunderstand a lot of the time. They think like, oh, I don't want to sound prideful, or it's not. If you're an artist, you should feel proud of your work. That's just the truth. Yeah. Yeah, man. So, 
Yeah, so to a fellow artist watching, yeah, take pride in your work. It's 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 important. That's part of what makes it good is uh, that you f you feel like yeah, this is gonna be a great novel or or whatever you're working on, painting. If you're a composer, or what an actor, whatever kind of art we are, it's, it's acting is an art, composing is an art, painting. Uh, I myself am a novelist, a horror novelist, so I take great pride in my 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 work, my novels. So that's, that's a huge factor in what makes your stuff good, is if uh, yeah, you try really hard and you want it to be good and you know it's good, and I absolutely know it's good. I think it's great, so that's not an ego thing. No, not at all, it's just the truth. I know it's uh, I know it's good. And uh, yeah, and people have told me, <clears throat> called the Cherokee, um, yeah, so Call the Crocodile is definitely like that's become I've noticed like the fan favorite. How I said like a lot of art, not just novelist, but artist will have like the piece or work they're most well known for. So it's definitely called the Crocodile that I'm most known for. However, I've had a lot of people uh, tell me like, oh, I really loved. Or like they'll say like oh my favorite of your your books is Call of the Cherokee or they'll say oh that was your scariest one, and uh, and yeah it makes me feel so good to hear that because like I mean I, it makes me feel good hearing uh, every time any any time yeah people uh, compliment me of course I, it's 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 just always just so nice the the feedback that I've had it's 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 wonderful it's 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 just such a rewarding fulfilling thing. And, uh, but yeah, uh, it's the truth. Uh, yeah, Call of the Cherokee, I've had a lot. A lot of people say that one, it's like, oh, I really liked that one. Like, that really stood out to them. And uh, people tell me that they think that's, like, the best one. And, um, yeah, that's interesting. I, I think about it like that. I'm thinking, hmm, what was it that, uh, I mean, I, I have an idea. I, I talk about, uh, like I saw, I, I said, I already said the general premise of uh, Call the Cherokee. So yeah, I get it why people like it and the twist. I always have uh, crazy twists, unexpected twists and turns in, in, in my work. And so yeah, I, I, I guess I get it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, that interests me that, yeah, people, uh, that, that one people really seem to remember too. And that they really, like, I've had a real lot of people tell me, oh, I love Call the Cherokee. And, and that's the one where I have uh, the back rooms. Uh, again, I don't want I I don't want to go into too much detail because I don't I don't like spoiling my own work or I, I don't want to do that. I, so I'm just saying that that's why I'm only saying a little bit. I don't want to spoil. Um, yeah, so that's uh, it's challenging in a way when you're an author. People ask you, "Oh, tell me about your book." It's, you're always thinking, oh, I don't want to tell too much, though, because you don't want to spoil it, especially if you write a genre, like uh, the genre I do, like horror fiction that has, a, like, a lot of twist and, uh, you know, like, foreshadowing for stuff that's going to happen. And so, yeah, you, you always need to be careful when, when talking about your own titles. You want, you, yeah, of course, you, it, it's, it's cool people are they're interested in it, but you don't want to spoil much. Or you don't want to spoil anything. So, um, yeah, so check out Call of the Cherokee if you're interested in that. I've had a, yeah, a real lot of my fans tell me that, like, oh, Love Garden, that's the book you've written that I love the most. And, uh, yeah, uh, so, yeah, I'm quite proud of that book. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it makes me happy when people tell me how much they like that one. Or, uh, yeah, Call of the Cherokee. And, uh, <clears throat> yeah, the back rooms, yeah, definitely real. I don't see... I guess I would need evidence to tell me that they're not real. And how on earth could you provide evidence if, if all these people are seeing the same thing in the dreams, their nightmares, whatever? I don't see how it could be just a coincidence. Yeah, the more, a lot of the time when you look into coincidences, you just find out coincidences are just like bullshit. <laughs> coincidences don't really exist a lot of the time it's just like I think about it how big of a cop-out is that like to say oh it's just a coincidence 
there's no reason for something to happen for this and that. It's like the, the, it gets more extreme, more unlikely that. So yeah, coincidences. Yeah, F. Gardner basically doesn't believe in coincidences. Um, yeah, maybe that sounds silly, but that's the truth. <laughs> okay. Well, talk to you guys later. I hope you liked the video. Bye.